When I was teaching you about correlation, I told you that if two variables are related, then changes in one variable will be reliably associated with changes in the other variable. Correlation does not imply causation. On the other hand, if the variables are causally related, then obviously changes in one would influence changes in the other. The same kind of thing is at play when we talk about probability. In fact, the occurrence of one event can change the probability of another event occurring. We need to understand what types of events can change the probability of other events occurring. And the first has to do with replacement. If you pick a card at random and put it back into the data set, you have sampled with replacement. Sampling with replacement is when previously selected items are replaced into the population. This is in contrast to sampling without replacement, in which previously selected items are not replaced. Let me give you an example of replacement or not, and you tell me which kind this is. This is something you are probably familiar with. We are sponsoring a raffle. As people enter our event, they can buy raffle tickets. And for each ticket that they buy, we separate the ticket from its stub and put one into a hopper. Later in the evening, we spin that hopper around containing all of the raffle tickets, and we reach in and pull out a ticket. Read off the number, and whoever is holding that ticket stub is a winner. And then we spin the hopper again, pull out another ticket, and that person is a winner. Each time we do this, we set the ticket aside so that the person who had won previously could not win a second time, certainly not with that same ticket. Is this sampling with replacement or without replacement? Because we are not putting the tickets back into the hopper, this is sampling without replacement. Your probability of winning, if you haven't won previously, increases every time a ticket is chosen and not replaced. And of course, if your ticket is chosen, then your chance of winning a second time on that same ticket drops to zero. These events can influence the probability of other events occurring. Another relationship that we might look for is whether events are independent. Events are independent when the occurrence of one event does not influence the probability of other events. For example, washing your car versus the chance of rain. Does washing your car cause it to rain? It might feel like that. However, whether you wash your car or not is independent of whether it rains. On the other hand, switch the order of the events and they become dependent. If you know that it is going to rain, you're much less likely to wash your car. Another example would be replacing a lost item. I remembered buying a bag of grommets and a tool to install grommets in a canvas. I remembered buying them, but I couldn't find my grommets anywhere. I looked everywhere that I could think. And so finally, I went out and I bought a new set of grommets. Brought them home, used them to fix the tarp that I had now bought, and then I needed to find a place to put my grommets. So I looked around in the garage and I thought, oh, I know exactly where I should put these grommets so that next time I will be able to find them. And I opened up that door and you know what I found? The previous set of grommets. I would like to tell myself that these events are dependent that buying new grommets is what caused me to find the old ones. But in fact, I know that these events are independent, that buying a replacement doesn't cause you to find the one that's missing. Although if I would have thought to myself, where would I put a new set of grommets? Who knows, maybe I would have been able to find the ones that I had misplaced. A Venn diagram of independent events can look one of two ways. 
because the events are independent of each other, they may share some outcomes in common. There may be an overlap, but that overlap is not required. Independent events could have nothing in common with each other. Two events, A and B, are independent if the probability of A given B equals the probability of A. Or likewise, the probability of A given B equals the probability of B. Now let's distinguish between independent and dependent events. When events are dependent, the probability of one event is affected by the occurrence of the other event, such as study and exam success. If you go in to take a test and simply guess, you'll get a score. How much better is your score going to be if you study? Your success on the exam is dependent upon the amount of time that you have spent studying. Another example might be drinking and driving. Hopefully, this is dependent. In other words, if you know that you've been drinking, you would choose not to drive. Or, if you're going out for the evening and know that you will be drinking, you make some sort of contingency plan so that you don't have to drive. Hopefully, these events are dependent, not drinking and driving being independent events. Dependent events have no sample points in common. For example, flipping a coin. The two outcomes are heads and tails. You must get one and only one outcome. You can't have both, you can't have neither. Getting tails is dependent upon not getting heads. Two events, A and B, are dependent if the probability of A given B is not equal to the probability of A, or the intersection of A and B equals zero. When we do statistical experiments, there are two assumptions that you should make. These may not always be true, but you should assume that they're true unless the problem tells you otherwise. And these are, you should assume that events are independent and sampled with replacement. Now let's talk about mutually exclusive events. Events are mutually exclusive when, if one event occurs, the other cannot occur. These events have no sample points in common. Event A is rolling a 1 or a 6 on the die. Event B is rolling a 2 or a 5 on the die. These two events have no sample points in common. Therefore, they are mutually exclusive. Let me illustrate this in another way. A little boy and his father are involved in a car accident. They are each taken by ambulance to separate hospitals. When the little boy arrives at the hospital to which he's been taken, the trauma surgeon looks at him and says, I can't operate on him. He's my son. Who is that trauma surgeon? And how quickly you answer is a function of whether you conceptualize this problem as being mutually exclusive or independent. The answer, of course, is that the trauma surgeon is the little boy's mother. Independent events can overlap. There is an overlap between being female and being a trauma surgeon. When a mutually exclusive event occurs, that means that the other event cannot occur, which would not be the case with a female trauma surgeon, but would certainly be the case with flipping a coin, heads or tails. If heads occurs, then tails cannot occur. There is no intersection between those two events. Therefore, mutually exclusive events are always dependent. Two independent events with non-zero probabilities cannot be mutually exclusive. Next, we're going to explore the rules for multiplication and addition using probability.